so far, um, if you think about those essential questions that I said, uh, what does it say? What does it mean? We now come down to what does it matter or how are you going to use the information? So we are going to start out with tools for analysis. Uh, but to back up uh, as, as we go through this, I want to keep things in context. Um, whenever we're analyzing something, um, we are trying to do it for a purpose and within the context of something. So we always have what is the purpose of our analysis? Are we trying to evaluate the historical performance of a company? Are we trying to prepare a future forecast? Are you, we trying to value a company's equity or debt securities or prepare ratings or recommendations? So we first need to define what our purpose is. Why are we doing this? The second is to define the content. Who is the intended audience? Who's going to read this? What's the end product going to look like? What's the time framework? What are our resources? and constraints. And then, based on the pur purpose and the context, formulate questions that can be answered. So we're always trying to find out what's the purpose? Why are we doing this? Always a reason. So the first step is we collect data to answer questions. So you just get all this data, and that's what you started looking at in the 10K, the investor presentation, um, that's you're collecting data okay once you get data you have to process it and analyze it the first step is to look at what we have available uh, the process the data we oftentimes use common size financial statements which we'll talk about we'll take a look at ratio analysis and then we're going to take a look at some analyzing data uh, where we can take financial ratios to assess profitability, liquidity, leverage, and efficiency at trends and then compare it to a peer or benchmark so we can see how we're doing. We then take this all together to try to come up with what the company's future is all about. We then develop a forecast and use it in valuation. What we're going to spend the first few minutes of this lecture on are common size financial statements. So when we come out, we can take a very broad view, a holistic approach is what I do, uh, which is based on fundamentals. That's what is the accounting numbers telling us. Uh, it's just not a numbers or formula. We got to start with what does a company do? Its strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We have to understand where is the company going? Where are they going? How do we know that they're going to be there in the future? What are the historical results telling us? What are the projected results telling us? So we take this holistic approach, but it's got to go beyond numbers. When you're in accounting, you're dealing with numbers, okay? And making sure financial reports are prepared in, 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 in accordance with generally accepted accounting process, principles consistently applied. Okay, uh, so here's an example is uh, we have three companies uh, that all have different sales numbers, cost numbers, um, expenses, and different profits. But it's hard to compare these because they all have, it, it, it's not necessarily comparable to say what firm is better or not. So what we do is we common size them. And that simply means that we take set sales to be 100%, and then we set everything else as a percentage of that. So we might have thought that this company with $2 million in sales, making only 400, doesn't look as good as this one. But when we look, yes, they are making 20%, but it helps us focus in on what's material. So that's one way of common sizing when we're comparing multiple companies, okay? And you want to do it that way because you can't compare two companies of different sizes uh, to make anything meaningful of them. Of course, the raw number is going to be different. So the first thing we want to do is common size everything. 
Here's another example for my company Destination XL. Uh, again, it's all, I've summarized it based on what's meaningful, okay? And again, I put in my gross margin uh, so that we know what percentage is, is of the sales, the, what the gross margin is as a percentage. Now, if I'm comparing within a company, you can see here, now I make the analysis. If we go back to here, well, yeah, it looks like they're growing, this is growing, and that's not. But when we take a look here, we can focus in really quickly on what is happening and where the variance is occurring. So by setting them all at 100, we can see what are the key categories that have changed. Here we can see the margin has deteriorated, okay? Uh, but look what's happened here. We've got expenses running high, depreciation is up. So we really have a lot of more information to be able to help us focus in on what we should be looking at. So common size is the first step. I put this on a graph, because sometimes graphically we can see things differently. They look almost like a straight line, uh, but I broke out sales, gross profit, expenses, uh, other taxes, and net income. But what I can, it's gonna help me focus in. It's simply a different way of looking at financial data. So we got, let me summarize what we talked about. The first step is we're going to collect data. We're going to collect data from the 10K and investor presentation. We're going to prepare an income statement in actual dollars using key material categories. That will vary by firm. If a firm doesn't have some categories, you don't want to use them. Sometimes when we access data, whether we're getting it uh, directly from a company, where whether you, we're using Edgar, which is the SEC source, whether we're using Bloomberg, it doesn't matter. We, there's a lot of standardization in that, but we want to summarize this so something we can get our hands around. Okay, so you're going to want to prepare that using actual dollars, indicate percentage as appropriate. Then we're going to common size them so that we can look at trends and comparative to peers. Everything keeps coming back to sales. Sales drive the company. So the better we can understand the relationship of costs and profit to sales, we can judge then what actions or strategies the firm will take to be able to move forward and grow sales. Uh, and oftentimes showing it graphically just gives us a better picture and helps us visualize things. So this is the first one, and I'm going to try to do this in little hunks. So hopefully this is a little 